Hello everyone. Welcome to DTS. I'd like to share my review of a Galaxy S10. Uh, I used my phone almost two months. I bought, I received my phone March 7th, 2019. So it's getting to two months. So um, yeah, I'd like to share my review after using Galaxy S10 after using two months. I finished all my setting. I'm very getting used to the, my phone now. And I'd like to share my opinion of uh, advantages and uh, disadvantages. Yeah, okay, let's get started. Um, first of all, uh, I used Galaxy S7, 8, Galaxy S7, 8, 9. And um, before I using S10, the previous version, like a 7, 8, 9, um, when I used the Galaxy S series, the there's too much gap between iPhone at the, that time. Basically, iPhone was much, much better the phone than Galaxy S series previously. Uh, my previous experience was that after using Galaxy S series 7, 8, 9, for two or three months, I go back to iPhone again. Because uh, what I felt was uh, is optimization, uh, so many things were so not very well engineered. And uh, the uh, disadvantages were too big for me. So I have to decide to switch back to iPhone. And, uh, but iPhone was not perfect phone. Uh, I will keep struggling to find the, the, the best phone I can buy at the time. So I already used the Galaxy S10 for two months. So there is, I should say, this I Galaxy S10 is best Galaxy S series you can buy by far. This is the best phone you can buy. I wanna say this phone is better than iPhone S SX in my personal opinion. So I like to share my advantages and disadvantages. First, let's get into the advantages. So first advantage is beautiful hardware. Um, you can see is all in on display. Let me show you. All in on display. Huh? Okay, let me see. This is hardware. The back side. I chose a white color, white back, and with a transparent silicone case. So because the design is so good and the design hardware design is so good, beautiful. So I wanted to have an original uh, color of a backside. So I chose silicone case. I really like it. I really like it. And the cost of this case was only $10. And uh, it can protect all the display. And even I drop it, uh, it will protect all the cases. And the grip, grip feeling is so secure and um, yeah and beautiful and the good thing is this bag can you see the color change continuously with the reflection of light sometimes it looks uh, rainbow color or white beautiful isn't it beautiful and look at this display and case ratio huge right huge almost 90 i should say 90 95 percent of okay, gap almost display all of the the case yeah first is beautiful uh, hardware design and the second thing i like of my galaxy s10 is this one always on display 
you can see the time current time 12 p.m. 51 minute Sunday April 28th and the battery percentage in addition it can show me the some notification of icon whenever I get uh, some notification without touching anything by I can see this information I don't need to touch anything just look at the, my phone and then I can see all the critical information that I need time date percentage of our battery and all the notification right I don't need to wake up my phone it's so convenient third advantage is you wake up with the lift and face unlock let me show you so it also this function is also available on iPhone I really like it so now is a phone is down and then when I lift it it will automatically unlock it will automatically turn on the display and check my face and uh, unlock my phone with them uh, by detecting my face let me show you one more time boom and you see it show my face and it unlocked the phone with this my face with this camera it's so fast right this function is almost very similar to iPhone but uh, it's not as secure as iPhone but it is so convenient boom dark and then unlock it what a great what a so fast this is a much much faster than previous versions I really like it um, okay this is a fourth advantage uh, display fingerprint sensor developed by Qualcomm so previous my phone was a OnePlus 6T uh, it used um, display fingerprint sensor right you may know basically there's a camera back back side of display in I uh, OnePlus 6T and uh, it uh, it works well but it is not very reliable basically I it failed many many times and it very it was not very reliable but uh, with this fingerprint sensor developed by Qualcomm this fingerprint sensor is much more uh, accurate and more responsive and um, reliable. Let me show you. So you cannot see any sign here, but the sensor is located around here. So by clicking here, boom, right? It can unlock phone with my face, also my fingerprint. It's very convenient. Just boom. Hmm? It's quite quite relatively responsive, right? It's not not bad. Not bad. And uh, previous original uh, software it was not so well optimized before, but with the software up update with the res uh, recently, um, it, the fingerprint sensor responsive. It's much more reliable, faster than before. So I don't need to touch continuously, just tap my fingerprinter like this and unlock. Right? You can see how responsive it is. Okay, third uh, next advantage is OLED display quality. You can see I wanna turn on the display and I wanna reduce the brightness of my uh, I'm sorry. Even this this uh, recording, you can see how bright it is, right? And uh, let me show you. And I use the currently most brightest brightest option right now. Can you see how crispy it is? I use iPhone One Plus Six T or the good smartphone. Among them, this Lux S10 display quality of display is the 
top, the best display I ever used from any smartphone. So bright, so crispy, and the color accuracy is beautiful, amazing. And um, when I also uh, learned that um, in the direct sunlight, this phone will detect the direct sunlight and the brightness even brighter than this setting. Even in direct sunlight, you can see the all the screen very clearly. So amazing, so bright, top of the bright display in the market right now. So impressive. Um, yeah, there are some apps. So amazing. Um, so amazing display. So amazing display. Yeah, I like to share. Yeah, look at this. This is a picture was taken by this uh, phone, Galaxy S10. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. Next advantage is a uh, One UI. Uh, uh, you interface developed by Samsung. So basically this is the default core setting and the icon and this is the default uh, icon and user interface uh, GUI icon developed by Samsung. And uh, when I click the settings here, it will and you see you already knew that um, a lot of people cover it already. Basically, um, all the critical icons are bottom of display, so it's very easy to access this icon using one hand. So here, finding an icons, um, the design also uh, change the color with the color, and uh, with the settings. This is all. Uh, location of uh, location of the um, icons are uh, uh, um, located at the bottom of display, so it can be very easily used by uh, one hand. So this is good. Um, uh, next one is uh, yeah, I own a Tesla Model Three. So good thing is uh, with Android phone. Without opening the app, I can access to the Tesla uh, shortcut button. Basically, I can show like this. My car name is Elon. I can unlock it, and okay, I also can open the front trunk, open the rear trunk, without opening the Tesla app. Without opening the app, I just with the user just. A shortcut to unlock, open trunk or trunk. Very convenient. Next advantage is this is all same for on Android phone. It's highly customizable. So Samsung with default setting, there are a lot of settings already there, but I changed a lot of things. This is not the default calendar and. Uh, uh, the weather app. Uh, this is a developed by Google, and um, you, it's so customizable. Even display everything, right? Um, yeah, this is a big and the I disabled Bixby function, and, uh, and the next one is uh, yeah. You can see the my back's ground is black. Pure black, right? You cannot see any um, any thing, right? Just you cannot see the any boundary of display. Um, highly customizable. So I organize my app more like an iPhone style. So all apps are organized like this: Car, Cloud, Samsung, Google, T-Mobile, Social, Utility, Health etc right so most uh, app that I use are 
organized so that this first home page is most app I use more frequently every day. The second one and third one is more like uh, uh, exploring new apps and organized in the folder like this. So default is not like this, but uh, yeah, highly customized. This is a huge advantage for the user who like uh, change some style based on their preference. Next one is, uh, yeah, I'll just share Duo. Duo is a video calling app developed by Google. This call, I use Duo almost every, every weekend to have a video call with my family in Korea. I'm from San Diego in the US and uh, in order to have a video call with my family, I use this duo every day. I test out face, um, what was the, what's the name, I, I from, uh, FaceTime. I use iFaceTime and duo. And I also tested Kakao Talk video calling. This is a very popular app in Korean. I test many things. Among them, Duo's performance and reliability, stability, Tom Notch is best, best video calling app I ever used. I really like it. Very stable. So this is app is also available in Android phone, iPhone. Great. So my parents don't using the iPhone. They are using Android phone. So if I use FaceTime, they cannot use it. If I use it, they need to change it to iPhone, right? This is not good. So Duo, this is a huge advantage. Uh, next one is, uh, um, yeah, the LTE data. LTE data. LTE data usage is much, much lower than iPhone. Uh, I like to share, uh, I'm using the T-Mobile, T-Mobile family plan, I have a four gigabyte of fast internet service with LTE. After four, four gigabyte LTE, speed of internet, is, I'm sorry, <coughs> decreased to the, <coughs> I use the iPhone with the same service what I felt, I in the same same normal usage, the usage of I uh, the added LT data in Android phone is much much lower than iPhone. Let me show you um, connection and uh, uh, mobile networks. Uh, I think data usage. Yeah, I used two gigabyte of data, right? And uh, with uh, monthly and um, data usage, I used uh, 500 megabyte for YouTube and Chrome Maps, Duo Photos, right? This is mobile data. Let's see other system uh, other system usage I can barely see an uh, Android OS right it uses only 21 megabyte previously um, when I used iPhone iPhone used the system system like usage like uh, checking the data GPS it use almost two gigabyte. It doesn't make sense at all. Even same usage. Hmm? Even even all my usage, all phones are same outside of a uh, Wi-Fi zone. I never reached to the four gigabyte in one month after switching to Android phone. Android fo iPhone. I always did reach it to four gigabyte mini, um, limit and used all fast internet. And then I had to use 
uh, uh, standard speed, slow internet LTE speed, and it's, it's so inconvenient. But Android uses so much lower data usage than I iOS. I tried to change all setting iPhone, it, it, I couldn't figure it out. You used so much, so much LTE data for time and GPS and other other things. It's so it was not good. I net. I think I even more use more. I use more in my Android phone to use all the apps. But I never reached to the limit of four gigabyte of. Uh, my data cap limitation. Great, this is a more optimized phone. Next one is the uh, the Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. This is the most frequently used uh, social network apps, and they it, they works faster than iPhone. Whenever I use iPhone, when I click the Twitter, it takes time to loading the old things. I need to see, it. let me show you. When I click the Twitter, see how fast it is? So fast, right? So fast. In iPhone, what I felt was that, wow, this is also great news, wow, 21, amazing powerful, okay, um, whenever I launch the Twitter, it takes, in iPhone, it takes, it took about the one or two seconds of loading time to see the first news, it really bothers me a lot. But when I switch to Android phone, it's so fast, like uh, so fast. It's already loaded, so it's much, much faster, right? My personal feeling of this one is so fast, amazing, so fast. Even Instagram, Instagram Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, all same. So much, much faster than other uh, iPhone. That's how I found. And with the uh, Snapdragon A55 and the new heat transfer um, cooling design in hardware side, the it does not produce much heat in the back. I don't barely feel any heat these days. It's more efficient, more powerful, and uh, yeah. So basically, it. Not much hit from the my phone. Next one is uh, better life is acceptable, but not great. Uh, previous uh, I, I uh, one plus sixty was better, but I want to say this better life is very similar to the iPhone um, iPhone ten I used before. And uh, the camera I like to show camera. Next one is a camera. Camera performance. Camera. This is a camera. Okay, I don't think I can show you this one. The camera performance and functions are even better than before. Can you see? Amazing camera. Amazing. I'm gonna show you some picture I I took. Uh, from this phone, um, basically it has a normal and telescope, and uh, yeah, it has a three camera, right? It's a three camera. So I'm going to sh um, zoom in, zoom out, and a normal. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, right? Okay. Next one is uh, wireless charging and power power pack function. So it support wireless charging. So convenient. So so convenient. So.
so convenient. Okay, this is a charging pad. Just put it over here. Charging. Now this green light represent showing that it's charging. So convenient, right? If I charge, just works. And um, power pack, power pack function. So this is a new new function from the um, from Galaxy S10 series. Yeah, this is the yeah power wireless power share function. So I can charge my Galaxy Watch Active or Galaxy My or or my Galaxy Bud. Let me show you another thing. This is uh, my Galaxy Watch Active. Beautiful, right? I already shared uh, my review in the, my channel. Please check it out. So, so is it ready? What I need to do is just for it. Can you see? It blinking the light is ready to share power. So what I need to pour my watch in the middle of um, the phone. Yeah, one hundred percent charged. Um, it sh doesn't work. I think because of my watch is fully charged. Uh, I think I think I should use uh, my Galaxy uh, Bud. Let me show you one more time. Um, yeah. Okay, ready? Can you see the black LED signal, which means that it's sharing this power with the Galaxy uh, Bud. So it's charging, it's sharing its power. Galaxy S10 is sharing power with the um, Galaxy Bud. It's very, very convenient. So I just need to bring USB Type-C charging cable when I travel. And uh, it can share all power with the watch and the bus. Yeah, can you see? Yeah, now it's working. Oh, it's 100 percent. And uh, oh, and, uh, yeah, wire power share. Yeah, because it's 100 percent, it just stopped. But the Galaxy S, Galaxy Buds, it uh, shows the this power sharing option. Amazing, amazing, so convenient. What a great function! So, next one, and uh, with this function, I don't need to bring the um, the ch charger for my watch when I have a travel, right? So, I just need to bring charger for my, my phone USB Type C. And it can be used to a charger for my watch and my buds. Very, very convenient. Great job. Next one is, uh, yeah. Um, this pinhole, this pinhole phone camera, I think is better than iPhone's chin badger. Or other phones were water drop shape in the middle and iPhone uh, one iPhone used the bezel huge space on the top display and uh, uh, one plus 60 had a water um, water drop um, shape in the middle of uh, top of the display right uh, there okay but uh, when I used uh, this Galaxy S uh, when I use the case Galaxy S10, this pinhole looks 
uh, I think this is much better option than other other uh, from camera uh, location wise and uh, yeah I can see more display and uh, yeah I like uh, this uh, their uh, decision and um, next one is uh, yeah this 3.55 millimeter headphone jack this is a jack is compatible with the computer headphone jack and uh, I can use my old headphones earphones and share it with uh, my computer and my phone when I need it uh, urgently and it's very convenient unlike another um, phone iPhone one plus sixty doesn't have uh, this 3.5 millimeter headphone jack anymore right so it was just very convenient I like it and uh, yeah this is a uh, things that I want to show and this is a uh, Samsung pay yeah. yeah Samsung pay right this is the very very convenient also it also works in nfc any nfc or just magnetic reader just works very very convenient samsung pay is working very well and uh, another advantage of samsung pay is that i can get a since point i can get a point samsung rewards point when i use my samsung pay i also get a point from my credit card or some samsung rewards this Samsung rewards point can be uh, redeemed using the um, any kind of gift or some other other things like coupon or some other um, I can also can um, convert it to the um, point card. Um, gift card like uh, Macy or Best Buy or other other gift card yeah sometimes also it is a rewards huge rewards are also available Home Depot 5% is ex exclusive right yeah great Best Buy yeah next one is uh, mm. Next one is uh, Galaxy Routines. I need to find. Um, yeah, here it is. Go to. Let me show you. Go to setting. Sorry. Go to setting. Advanced features. And uh, here, big speed, big speed routines. What I. I have four settings basically at in when I go before going to bed time I set it from 11 30 p.m. to 7 29 a.m. every day sound mode change to vibration blue light color on display color is more less blue light And brightness of this display now is 100%. It changed automatically to 40% during this time. And night mode is all on. It doesn't disturbing with the news. And the char charge lock screen shortcut, Twitter, finance, running of notification is on. So it all automatic. Another setting I said is home. From my home, when I go to my office, it, this is my building and uh, it changed to sound mode is changed to vibration Wi-Fi is on and the uh, lock screen option is map and duo when I come to home yeah home now is uh, currently running right Wi-Fi Wi-Fi is on sound mode is sound no vibration just make a sound 
and the voice wake up is on total finance blue light is off when i from my office to my home it changes the setting like this automatically based on the my location and bed, bed is safe night auto detect auto display oh it is display off when i sleep it automatically detect it it off always on display to save battery what an amazing smart this is a big speed routines i really like this automatic settings so smart so usually when i home i sometimes put my phone under the some other place and then sometimes i miss some calls or some notification with the sound you can you may not miss anything right so important things notification or call very very convenient very very convenient uh, option yeah this is all advantage i want to share with you after using my this phone for two months and uh, now let's talk about disadvantages first of all hardware this power button position is too high see too high I hold the phone like this optimum position of the power button should be here not here it should be here the OnePlus 6T home button position was here iPhone position is here power button but Galaxy X10 I don't know why they move shift power button above here I don't under, I don't get it, it should, I always reach to ex, um, extend my thumb like this mm, now I came used to the this uh, position but it's not good for customer and interestingly the recently the Samsung Galaxy 5G S10 5G is launched 5G phone is even much bigger than this phone and the interesting power button of 5G S10 5G located here perfect position why why Samsung made a difference I don't understand next I Galaxy S10 please locate the power button in the optimum position not here it's too far away um, I also consider the Galaxy S10 plus bigger this phone but that power button is even worse than this one is all right over, over, over the location power button is about here so far away from my thumb position I don't understand that's the biggest disadvantage yeah it should be located here not here but uh, this phone is uh, certainly small enough next one is uh, this default one new eye samsung's icon these default icons are too dull simply they are not pretty it's so not elegant I don't quite understand what is their design I mean design philosophy wise okay Samsung shop about 3d shape this is more cartoonish dull dull design internet with a circular and like a, some our links how we can understand this is the internet icon messages smart switch and contact is icon shape looks too dull dull right camera icon not pretty not pretty look at this it's a call call icon clock this clock showing the current time and the time and the minute meters but it looks not pretty 
Not pretty. Please change it. Next one is the uh, default settings. The when I um, set the, my phone at the beginning, or big speed functions. I want to show something. Oh, no. Yeah, I turn up the big speed home button function, or big speed function and uh, the default settings and default icons. So not good. So I changed so many things and spent uh, some time, a lot of time to make it more like my phone. It also an um, advantage also highly customized, customizable function. But this now customer want, customer want the very well designed and uh, well optimized the design and options, default option. I need to spend a lot of time to set for, for setting. This is not good. Even message, I download Google app, Google's message and not the Samsung's map. Next one is uh, the uh, Samsung uh, Bixby. Yeah, Bixby, Bixby, oh, Bixby. Let me open it. Bixby Home. Sponsored nearby. Ah, oh, hi, that's all. Why I still don't know why Samsung still invest the this service and this function that already exist Google now where is Google okay Google now is available right Google now, every know, everyone knows that. Google now is much better, more smarter, even smarter than Bixby. No question. Still don't understand why Samsung Group investing huge amount of time effort to develop Bixby. And they also have dedicated Bixby button luckily Thankfully, now we can customize the Bixby button. But customer, almost every customer, almost every customer, or the tech YouTube reviewer, tech reviewer, saying that they hate, they don't like Bixby. Don't make the service that customer doesn't like okay please Samsung please listen to customers opinion their thought please make a survey whether you like Bixby or don't like Bixby please apply customers needs and fix it this is not customer want to have And um, next one is uh, the. This is a, I think, feel faster, faster than the iPhone, but uh, the this phone I feel like is not uh, as fast as iPhone uh, One Plus XT. The I can say I feel a uh, slightly lag, slight lag very slight lag uh, when a new app is launched or to multitask and um, but the one plus 6t which used the previous generation of uh, a chip snapdragon a45 with optimum software optimization hardware optimization the performance of uh, a water phone felt 
in my personally it was felt faster than this one this is a great form but uh, still there room to improve the optimization in terms of speed I will at launch and uh, this uh, fingerprint sensor is uh, can you see can you s feel a slight lag yeah this is not so instantaneous right it has a slight lag I think if I I believe I think I one plus six team adopt the fingerprint sensor exact same one exact same central a55 their form performance even much better than Galaxy S10 right that's what customer want as a customer I begging spend more time and effort to fixing the performance and optimization don't invest um, things I think they should uh, consider optimize the OS integration further uh, smaller company like OnePlus 6T can do better than giant company I think we should Samsung should learn from small company like one plus they started with their company with a much lower position but uh, their huge competitor right now price is so competitive and uh, they're using exact same snapdragon a55 chip and the uh, display size is very similar price is over half price of uh, this one i think Samsung should learn from them. Customer simply want seamless experience, right? Not fast hardware, just make it right. Um, yeah, in that perspective, I'm really concerned about the future of Samsung. Um, yeah, with the competition between. Um, Chinese uh, Android phone and iPhone and um, next one is uh, is similar things Samsung developed their own camera contact app email Galaxy store who using the Galaxy store right Android user using the one uh, Play Store Galaxy themes, Samsung Notes, My Files, Gallery, Messages, Calendar, Internet. Why they exist? Already, a lot of good apps available. Google also making their own message app their own internet apps browser app why you spending your time and effort to make a app and it, that app is worse than the available app in the market why you spend your effort to make it this is not efficient right please focus on what customer want that's all i want to say and uh, don't put the unnecessary unnecessary apps hmm? the theme message and um Another disadvantage is that um, uh, this is uh, showing the notification function. And when I lift up, find search. Let me show one more time. 
is slow. It takes about one second to launch search function, right? Another disadvantage, I, in order to find anything my phone, I need to, another step, I need to click finder search here and then type it, type it. No, no, it's not right, not correct, not good. The all customer, what customer want to have, when I sweep out a board like this, it should be faster than this and uh, without touching the, this uh, search function, I should be able to find it quickly. It's slow and I need an external step. This is not customer want. Please fix it. And uh, another disadvantage is uh, this curved edge. They advertised a lot of this curved edge, right? This is one of the picture I took from my phone. Can you see the some slight um, display distortion on the edge? They advertised that with the edge screen display is more um, immersive right but in my personal view look at it, it looks a little bit darker on the edge right or here basically display distortion I don't see any advantage any advantage in adapting edge display this effort is not worth it not worth it my base, my, my opinion. iPhone, Apple do not adopt, does not adopt this edge display, right? They can do that. They can do that. But why they do not adopt this edge display? There's a reason. They already know. There's no advantage of edge display. Edge display. I don't see any advantage. You see? Displays the picture is distorted on the edge. Why? Because of edge edge display. This is not advantage. This is disadvantage. They put a lot of money effort to make worse experience. Next one is the this um, this um, app. Okay, I think it's a little bit dark. Okay, this can I think okay now we can see. This is the um, back heartbeat sensor. Okay, and some notification sensor. Customer can see the sensor, bare sensor, okay? Silicon sensor. I don't like it. This should be like black, and the issue customer should not see that this uh, bare chip. If I look at more closely, we can see the some wires, gold wires, and the bare chip. This is not pretty. And who using the this sensor to check their heart rate. I think they need to do some research. And if majority of customers don't use this function, I use it once and I never use it. Which means that this sensor is meaningless. Remove it, make it black, more clear, beautiful, and uh, spend save money, okay, and reduce price of phone. Another disadvantage is battery life. Battery life. Battery life is not is worse than one plus sixteen. Huh? This battery already it used uh, about ten percent right 
100% to 690% in one hour. So battery life somehow is a feel like worse than OnePlus 60. And the fingerprint sensor is much better than OnePlus 60. But uh, as you can see, it there is some lag. It's not very fast. So fingerprint sensor is not fast. I think is we don't know what is the root cause of this one. Could it be a sensor issue or software issue? But based on my experience with performance optimization of a software, I think it's more related to the uh, software issue. This this a lot. It works well, but there's a lag, one or two second lag. I don't like it. The fingerprint sensor is not very fast. And the f this is a final disadvantage. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was the final disadvantage. But, uh, yeah, it's already one hour review, quite long review. Um, overall, this is my conclusion. There is no perfect smartphone in the market. There is no perfect smartphone in the market. But the, based on the, my review, as an engineer's perspective, this is the, I think, best phone you can buy right now. Best phone. A lot of advantages, also disadvantages. Uh, but with this uh, unperfect, not perfect smartphone market, I think this is the perfect smartphone you can buy right now. Samsung made a really, really good smartphone. Really, really great smartphone. Although it's not perfect, but uh, I think they can make even better than with uh, with the phone. This phone by fixing the the things that I covered, then this is gonna be your best phone, best smartphone for all customer. Also, yeah, the price is a little bit expensive. It's almost a one thousand phone, one thousand dollar, right? In price should be reduced. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, thank you for paying attention to the my review. I hope you can enjoy my review and uh, um, maybe one or two months later, I will switch this phone to another phone. Could it be OnePlus 7 or other phone with the uh, Key Mobile Jump on Demand service. So when I get a new phone, I also review, share my opinion of my new phone with everyone. Um, yeah, that's it. And uh, have a good day and uh, be happy by helping people around you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. See you later.